Sweden's receipt of its first JAS-39 Gripen E marks more than the arrival of a new airframe, it represents a shift in how Nordic air power will be generated, updated, and employed in the years ahead. The handover at F-7 Satinas begins the operational rollout of a 60-aircraft program designed from the outset to live comfortably inside dense electronic warfare and to exploit software agility as a core capability. In practical terms, the Swedish Air Force is onboarding a network sensor shooter that can be retasked quickly, patched frequently, and sustained from places that complicate an aggressor's targeting calculus. For NATO's northern flank, that means additional reach, resilience, and decision speed embedded in day-to-day -day air policing and contingency operations. What distinguishes the new standard is not one marquee system but the coherence of the whole. The aircraft couples a wide-field active electronically scanned array with a passive infrared search and track and a full-spectrum electronic warfare suite, then fuses those inputs to emphasize what matters for the next move. That design choice shifts pacing. A four-ship can distribute roles, some flying silent and hunting on infrared, others sanitizing sectors with radar, yet still share a common, low-latency picture. Weapons employment benefits directly, off-boresight field of regard and robust data links enable early, opportunistic shots while shooters crank away to preserve energy and position. In a theater defined by long distances, mixed weather, and heavy emissions, this ability to shape geometry without broadcasting every step is strategically valuable. The airframe itself underwrites that concept with practical engineering. Gripen E carries more fuel than earlier variants, offers 10 hardpoints for flexible loadouts, and is driven by a 98 knots F414G for improved persistence and dash. Yet the most consequential trait remains Sweden's trademark approach to basing. The jet is optimized to operate from road strips and secondary sites, turning around in minutes with small, dispersed teams. In a Baltic crisis, such mobility dilutes the effectiveness of preplanned strikes on fixed airfields and forces an adversary to hunt a moving shell game across forests and highways. When sortie generation becomes a deterrent message, logistics tempo and austere sustainment can matter as much as raw fleet size. Software cadence is the second pillar of survivability. Sweden's architecture separates flight-critical code from mission applications, allowing new electronic attack techniques, countermeasure libraries, and sensor behaviors to be inserted rapidly and without grounding large portions of the fleet. This is not an incremental convenience but an operational doctrine, in the cat and mouse of electromagnetic warfare, relevance decays by the week. A fighter that can ingest a new EW playbook on short notice imposes uncertainty on opponents and shortens Sweden's own learning loop. Over time, the fleet's combat value becomes a function of update velocity as much as airframe hours. Weapons integration reflects the same philosophy of adaptable reach. The aircraft is cleared for a heavy air-to-air -air configuration that can include a large number of long-range missiles alongside short-range self-defense rounds, while leaving room for pods or tanks to suit the mission. In typical Nordic tasking, that means an interceptor posture with credible standoff options for beyond visual range engagements and enough endurance to police maritime approaches and support integrated air and missile defense nodes ashore. Shoot and reposition stops being a catchphrase once the radar's look angle and data link behavior make it routine, enabling shooters to protect kinematics without cutting guidance to weapons already in flight. Interoperability within the alliance is now a structural fact rather than an aspiration. Sweden's accession to NATO codified patterns of cooperation that had matured through exercises and real deployments. The Gripen E slides into those workflows through standard communications and data links, effectively adding another high-quality sensor effector to a Nordic-Baltic grid already populated by multiple national fleets and ground-based systems. The larger the mesh, the more options commanders have to allocate sensing and striking functions dynamically. With each additional E model delivered beyond the conversion lead at F7, the cumulative effect increases, one more emitter to deceive, one more passive eye to detect, one more shooter to enforce standoff. The transition will be measured, not abrupt, and that is a feature. 
Sweden continues to invest in the C-D series to preserve availability and training continuity while the E model ramps. Keeping a mixed fleet spreads technical risk and sustains sortie rates, leaving little vulnerability for an adversary to exploit during the changeover. The approach mirrors Sweden's broader defense modernization, steady increments, minimal downtime, and an emphasis on sovereign control of critical software and integration. It is an industrial signal as much as a military one, domestic aerospace know-how retained, tool chains active, and the ability to integrate new weapons or tactics at a national tempo rather than waiting for multinational program cycles. For Stockholm and its allies, the regional implications are concrete. The Baltic Sea, now fringed by alliance members on nearly every shore, becomes a more hostile environment for coerced probes, shadowing flights, or missile-baiting gambits. Longer-range identification runs can start earlier, intercept cycles tighten, and the amount of time friendly aircraft must spend, naked, with emitting sensors diminishes. Maritime interdiction and coastal surveillance gain a nimble contributor that can pass curated tracks, cue surface shooters, and then vanish to a roadside pit stop before counterstrikes materialize. Even in routine air policing, the presence of a platform built for EM clutter raises the cost of mischief by eroding the adversary's confidence in their jamming and decoy recipes. From the perspective of a would-be challenger, the gripe and e complicates campaign math. A fighter that can live in electronic noise, fling long-reach missiles from favorable geometries, and regenerate rapidly from austere sites forces wider standoff distances and burns more tanker fuel to hold orbits. It lengthens the reconnaissance strike loop by degrading pre-planned target sets and compels larger packages for the same intended effect. Those are subtle cumulative penalties rather than dramatic single sortie shocks, yet they matter across a crisis timeline. Deterrence often accrues through such frictions, delays that spoil windows of opportunity and logistics bills that outstrip political appetite. The delivery also underscores the value of decision speed in modern air combat. With human-machine collaboration in the cockpit, a wide area display, and AI-assisted prioritization, the aircraft aims to promote comprehension rather than present raw data. Pilots tasked with managing a crowded battle space can spend more time sequencing actions and delegating tasks to wingmen and supporting nodes, less time curating symbology. In practice, that means a tighter observe-orient to side-act cycle, particularly when paired with ground-based sensors and partner aircraft that feed and benefit from the same fused picture. Ultimately, Sweden's first gripe in E is the starting shot, not the finish line. The significance lies in the pipeline now open, conversion training at pace, software increment stacking, and units beyond F7 preparing to absorb a platform built for quick adaptation. The aircraft brings fresh sensing and survivability to the northern air picture on day one, and it is designed to be better on day 100 without a depot marathon in between. For a region where unforeseen crises tend to move faster than procurement cycles, that blend of mobility, software agility, and network lethality is precisely the kind of resilience that deters miscalculation. The Baltic will not become quiet, great power competition rarely allows that, but it will become a harder place to play games with radar screens and flight plans.